Hey, what's up, Leron here. Today I wanna to work on two things with you. One is how to greatly simplify a scene to its very basic shapes, and I always talk about this, and I think this is a great example of that. It's also a good preparation for my How to Simplify in Watercolor course that I'm working on this month filming. Uh, hopefully I'll finish filming the entire thing. Now another note, look at the temperature. It's crazy, it's all over the place. The colors are very pure. It's another thing I want you to try to work on, okay? So with that, let's take it to the table, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. So I'm getting started with the drawing now. This time, unlike some of the last videos, I'm gonna keep it very simple. Now, if you've been following Tim Wilmot's YouTube channel, he's an excellent watercolor painter, you may recognize that I'm working in a very similar style to his, uh, and that is all of the buildings in the background are going to be simplified into one big shape. Um, and this works really well because the composition of light and shadow already is kind of made for that. You get a lot of interesting shapes if you even just observe this as mid-value and white, paper white. Uh, so this makes the scene and painting it very simple uh, because all we have to worry about is what areas do we fill and what areas do we avoid. There aren't any uh, multiple gla glazes, there isn't too much, you know, different layers, it's just one go. So it is essentially a la prima. Uh, so I'm starting to establish the cars. Now I did kind of mess up the their shapes, I will admit. I made some of them too thin. I, the shapes aren't accurate, okay? So don't hold me to that standard for this video. What I do want us to focus is, as you'll see, the temperature and the simplification, especially of the background. So hopefully that will lead to a satisfying result. I'm uh, personally very pleased with how it turned out and it really reminds me of a lot of my plan air work. Okay, so despite the tires being all wrong, and then you see I'm just placing things really uh, quickly, I do also attribute this to the previous painting I did, or the s several previous paintings I did before this one, uh, in which I was very delicate and very accurate, so I needed to blow off some steam and just go a little wild. Uh, so now that I got the first car in, and if you notice, it takes up most of the space of the photo vertically, uh, horizontally, sorry, and I kind of missed that uh, here. Now I have that as a reference for the rest of the car. So the next car, as you can see, I'm gonna place a little behind it, and it's gonna take about half of the space that's left, okay, from left to right, from the rightmost side of the left car, and all the way to the edge of the page. Uh, okay, and I'm putting in, now here I realize that I have to be a little more careful, so I slow down just a bit. Uh, now notice one key part here is the shadows under the cars. And what's beautiful about these scenes is the light comes from the top and maybe a bit from the front, so it's kind of like painting against the light, but you get, it's still from the top, so you get a nice little shadow under the cars that's very thin. One of the things you want to pay attention to is you make this shadow very thin. Uh, and that really helps the viewer read it as a shadow under the car uh, because it's all squeezed because we look at it at an angle, okay? It's, it's, it's kind of squashed, uh, if you will. Now, I'm just adding a couple of details on the buildings. Uh, the reason I do that is for later on, once I want to put in some dry brush perhaps, uh, I know where to put it, where to put the windows and all of that. It's a bit hard to draw on a layer of paint, so I always try to get the drawing uh, done entirely before I apply paint to paper. This is something I don't mention a lot, but it is, uh, in my experience, something that happens. So here we go, starting with the building, and the, again, the advantage here, we're going to treat this whole thing as one big shape, and my drawing support to that approach because the drawing itself is very you know, like one big sh unified shape here. Um, I will mess up some of the evenness of the wash as you'll see later on because I do want to leave some highlights so I'm skipping some areas and, I, and it was important for me to convey the uh, shapes of the contours of the, sh of the shape. Uh, to convey those well. Uh, so some of the wetness of the wash is lost. Uh, and unfortunately, my spray water sprayer was in my bag and I was just a little too lazy to take it out. I should have, because then I could spray this, keep it wet for longer. Uh, but in any case, it won't hurt the overall impression too much, because when you look at it from afar, and you may have noticed this in the introduction to the video, uh, what you really see, all you really see is just the overall large shapes. 
Uh, you don't really care about unevenness in some of the washes and that can also be remedied later on with some dry brush. So let me talk a bit about how I do this wash. I started with uh, a very warm mix and I'm varying it on a very instinctive level so I varied it into yellow and then into some more red but the key uh, point here is warm. Okay, close to us the mix is relatively warm. Uh, the reason for that is multiple reasons, but if you look at even at the reference photo, you'll see that the farther it goes, the more muted and blue and cool the colors get. So I wanted to recreate that effect, okay? Now again, I'm, I'm going into a wa wash that's already started to dry, um, which kind of hurts it and adds some backgrounds that you'll see later on. You see the paint doesn't move too much. Uh, and it's a bit too dark at this stage, I should have just waited. Uh, but it's not too bad, you can see the transition to blue is a little patchy because, again, some of it has started drying, but that's fine. So you see, the more I move to the right, the more I'm going to put in some more uh, grays and blues and greens. And the, building, the, the buildings on the leftmost side, you see I went very red, but still not as red as the car. I do want the car to pop in front of that building. So. You'll see me later on mixing some very warm reds for the car. Now, it's important to note, I could have taken a completely different approach and have muted, I could have muted the entire back uh, of this painting, all of the buildings, not just the, the ones on the right side. I could have turned them all into gray and have the cars colorful. Again, a lot of it is up to our interpretation. So feel free to try it out differently. Feel free to try a different color mixer, okay? Feel free to try a lot of different things with these kinds of scenes, okay? Again, a lot of it is up to interpretation. As you can see, I really interpreted and, and have changed many things and have taken it into a more personal direction of pushing the saturation and enjoying the pure colors, if you will. Um, uh, so now I'm trying to spray a bit of water into this wash, but just to spread out some of the, dry, the drier uh, parts of it that didn't mix well, I also sprayed some water. It didn't work out exactly as I wanted, but that's fine. So now some fiery, fiery red for the car. I'm using essentially the, the split primary palette, so you get French Ultramarine for the warm red and uh, warm blue, and then Thalo Blue for the cool blue. You get Pyrrol Scarlet for this car, which is a very warm and fiery red, and you get a Quinacridone rows for the buildings in the background, okay? The only thing I don't have two of is the yellow, and as you may know, I hate uh, cool yellow, so I just go for um, something like an Indian yellow, uh, New Gamboge. Uh, I find that these work really well for me. So these, uh, this one has essentially perhaps six, uh, f five paints used, uh, two yellows, two, uh, two uh, reds, two blues, and one yellow. Uh, and you see this here it's really important to push this fiery red as much as I can to have it pop when compared to the building at the back, okay? Now I'm starting to mix some more of a blue mix for the uh, windshield, for some of the window details, um, some of that. <coughs> Sorry, for the lower part of the car, I will use that very same mixture as you can see now. And this is really all a prima. I'm just going top to bottom, getting all the details in as much as I can. You see, I'm not even trying to follow the reference at this stage. I'm just creating the impression I want. Now, what's beautiful about having this strong red is contrasting it with a strong blue. And this car is at the most front. And look, you see, I fixed the placement of the tire a bit, so that's good. Um, and the car is at the front, so I want to put the most contrast in that. So you get the most contrast when it comes to temperature, okay? Um, and you get this fiery red um, and cool blue, very cool blue. Shadow under, under the car, extremely important. Now you see the car is a little squashed, it should have been a little taller. Um, that's my bad, you know, so sometimes you have to take more time drawing. Uh, if you can spend more time drawing and then when you paint just let loose, that's also good. I find that sometimes it's psychologically it doesn't work for me if I spend a lot of time on the drawing stage. Um, it hurts my spontaneity, but I, I just, as I said it, I realized what I can do is work hard on the accuracy, but still keep it not detailed. So you can be accurate with fewer shapes. I could use one big shape for the car that's very accurate, but it's still one shape without the details within it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now we're done with this car and we slowly move towards the back. Now the next car is still a little red, 
but I mute it. I don't want it to pop as much as the car at the front, okay? Uh, and as you'll see, as I move more towards the right cars, uh, you'll see me using some cooler colors, some more muted colors, perhaps. Well, actually, not muted. <laughs> They're fairly saturated. Uh, sorry about the noise, uh, as you'll see. Uh, now, w what I wanted to do with this video is keep it real time because it's a relatively short process and I hope you'll appreciate seeing it real time and hearing my thoughts as this painting unfolds because I've been doing a lot of time lapses uh, lately. Uh, now, you see, for this car, you don't need much. So you get the basic red and kind of muted. And for the windows, adding a bit of blue, trying to keep it light because the windows are fairly lighter than the car itself. Uh, but still pouring in that blue, uh, and that'll create another interesting play of warms and cools, but again, this entire car, together with its shadow, is just one shape, okay, you, it's important to remember that. Uh, now, I am pouring in wet and wet some uh, drier color, but I make sure that it's not too dark um, to separate it from the car at the front, and hopefully I will be able to manage that impression. Uh, and now we make our way to the next cars. Now notice one of them is a bit of green. So I'm trying to create that. And you see I'm putting in a bit of this sap green. I forgot about that. So I did use some sap green. Uh, so it's six colors total. Uh, and then you see in the lower sections I just add a bit of that phthalo blue and a bit of a neutral mix just to get the bottom part of the car in its shadow uh, to look a little... Uh, darker and more muted. So you see I got this, it's it's a kind of pickup truck and it's just the back part of it is showing. And by the way, as always, I will link to the reference photo, obviously, so you can see at high resolution. It's a series of beautiful uh, photos from wet canvas. You'll see uh, a bunch of uploads from the same user and it's just really nice. Now I thought I'd contrast this uh, green with a bit of yellow and notice how the, the white gap really plays an important role here in separating between the two cars and helping with the sense of light and shadow. Uh, so sometimes all you need is smartly placed shapes uh, so the gaps can play an important role, especially in this kind of a painting where uh, we don't get too much variation in value. It's just the colors, temperature and shape um, and big shapes in, <laughs> for that matter. Now this has, uh, I waited for a while, I used a hairdryer to dry it and now once it's dry and can come back and start placing in those dry brushes. Now again, this is a, a matter of feeling, you have to feel your way through it, where do you want to make some details more visible and where you want to keep them fairly uh, loose and keep the painting not as tight. Generally speaking, if you look at the foreground, this is where you will see more details as the viewer. Look at the reference photo. You can see more details there when compared to some areas at the back, okay? Uh, so you want to make sure to at least start from the front and then take your time with the back. Um, if you just jump into the background, you may end up putting too many details there and it will force you to put even more details in the foreground. So start with the focal point, so to speak. It's not really a main focal point because we have the cars, but it is a focal point to some extent. Um, so you see, I'm just putting in some of these lines. It all conforms to the perspective. If you look at the reference photo, you'll see the perspective. All the lines recede into a vanishing point that's to the right. Now here I'm getting close to the right section, so I have to be a little careful not to overdo this. I do have a video on dry brush technique. Uh, I, want to, I wanted to mention that because it is a technique that can be a little complex. Okay, so check that out. Just search for my name and dry brush. You'll find it um, if you're having a hard time mixing the right quantities. Okay, it is a challenge sometimes. Uh, you need to get it dry, but still moving so that actually some color comes out of the brush. Uh, so you want to make sure to check that out as well. Now here I'm going to put that tree in the background. I felt like it was a little too loosey-goosey, so I'm going to put in some uh, more dry brush. A lot of yellow mainly and some French ultramarine uh, to create some structure around the tree. So you see, and I'm still making sure it's a very broken uh, brush mark. And I'm just putting in some dry brush for the leaves. I will add a bit of water and maybe spray some water. I think I just add a bit of water to that uh, to spread it out a bit and help it move, you see. So first I'm just splashing some water. I wanted to break off, because there are so few shapes, I thought, how about I just add a bit of splatter to it and and get some of the shape in the background to spread out a bit. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm going to put the final detail in this line that will help guide us into the painting and we'll wrap it up. So we're done with this one, quite a simplified one as you can see. And I think again, two key pointers for this one, simplify the shapes, just one big chunk, 
two, uh, couple of big chunks for the cars and that's it, you don't need much more. Second, feel free to go uh, a little more expressive when it comes to the temperature and other elements that are fully within your control. I personally love this. I find that paintings that have this interesting and even crazy color scheme interest me more. I find that it's something I naturally do more of when I'm painting plein air, meaning I'm more connected to the reference and I'm looking at it, uh, you know, for, without with fewer filters. Uh, so it's a very authentic way for me to do things. And look at how the just enough, um, it's just enough to leave some of these white gaps to, you know, get the, the impression across. Uh, and you can fully understand what it is you're looking at, even if you cannot make out any of the details. Uh, in any case, with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much, let's do this face to face. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you gained something out of this. I personally, again, love this look. I love this feeling and I try to express it Usually when I'm outside doing plein air, it's something that I very naturally gravitate towards and I hope I can bring more of that and merge it together with some more accurate, fine <laughs> skills uh, and fine control to get an even better result, okay? So this is really an authentic expression of how I like to paint personally and I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and I hope you learned something new. Now, I am working on the how to simplify uh, watercolor course. It's gonna be out really soon. If you do wanna learn how to let go uh, and paint freely, then I do have the frustration free watercolor course the link is always in the description box below i want to thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate your time and i will see you again in another vid real soon <laughs>